Good morning. Welcome. It's lovely to join you once again for our worship uh, live here from St. Christopher's Church in Potts Wrigley. Great to hear our bells. Still, we have to have them uh, play a recording of them, unfortunately. It was good to hear Mary Curl on the organ, too, recorded this week here in church. I'm by myself, uh, but there's a wonderful uh, atmosphere created in church as the sun streams through the stained glass window over there. I really wish you could be here to see it too and to share in worship with me. Well, the good news is that uh, you will be able to if you'd like to next week, although you'll still be able to join us online as well. But more of that later. Now, today uh, is the second Sunday of Lent and we have a tradition here at St. Christopher's of lighting uh, an, a Lent candle, rather like the candles we use in Advent. And so I've lit the first two candles this morning, and I'd like you to join me in a prayer for the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings. And by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue by greeting one another in the Lord's name. Do join in with all the words that are printed in gold. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Well, we are indeed going to sing God's praise now with uh, a wonderful hymn accompanied once again by Mary on the organ here and uh, by singers recorded in their own homes during the week. I love this hymn and it's not just because it's a great tune. I was singing it to myself this week and it occurred to me that it's possibly for me the, the best summary that you'll find, at least in a hymn, of the Christian worldview of what it means to know and live in the light of the gospel of Christ. And I hope that uh, you will enjoy celebrating that and praising God for it as you join in with the hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
What a wonderful privilege it is to know that hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and to be able to celebrate it together in worship now. It's also wonderful that he receives us for all, for all our mistakes and for all the things we have done wrong. And that's why we now come to him in our prayer of confession. Confession based on the words of Psalm 51. So these words of introduction, and then I hope you will join in with the Lord have mercy, the Christ have mercy, after each short sentence with a moment of reflection. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've now got a Bible reading brought to us by Reg Ferguson. From the Gospel of Mark. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. He made this very clear to them. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned round, looked at his disciples and rebuked Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. Your thoughts don't come from God, but from human nature. Then Jesus called the crowd and his disciples to him. If any of you want to come with me, he told them, you must forget yourself, carry your cross and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for me and for the gospel, you will save it. Do you gain anything if you win the whole world but lose your life? Of course not. There is nothing you can give to regain your life. If you are ashamed of me and of my teachings, in this godless and wicked day, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes to the glory of your Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Reg. Let's pray. Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the suffering servant, the servant king, grant us your grace and your insight that we may learn how to follow him better. In his name we pray, amen. Why on earth would anyone follow Jesus? He had a pretty lousy recruiting strategy. If any of you want to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross and follow me. And make no mistake, those early hearers knew the meaning of carrying your cross. They had seen enough poor wretches on their way to the appalling Roman death of crucifixion to understand what Jesus was asking of them. And yet, 
starting out with a small bunch of 12 followers, by the end of three short years, that figure had grown to several hundreds, maybe thousands. And in the years which followed, the number kept increasing exponentially as the early church grew across the known world. And that growth was never stopped, meaning that over the centuries right to today, countless billions have chosen, chosen to follow him. But why? After all, he couldn't be clearer, it won't be easy. And many have found that to be true. Most of those 12 disciples, large numbers in the early church and untold numbers through the next 2000 years, paid with their lives for their faith in him. And that's to say nothing of persecuted Christians in the world today. The charity Open Doors keeps a watch list of the top 50 countries where it is difficult and dangerous to be a Christian. From top two, North Korea and Afghanistan, to 49 Kenya and 50 Comoros. The stories of everything from injustice and discrimination to torture and death are devastating. 4,761 Christians were killed for faith-related reasons last year. But here's the thing. Many of these persecuted Christians could spare themselves all this horror if they renounced their faith in Jesus or never followed him in the first place. And yet still they persevere, still they follow, and still new believers join them. So why do they follow? Well, you can find answers in the words of many of those Christians. Read their stories in the materials produced by Open Doors or Barnabas Fund, both of which we support as a church. But let's see if we can also find answers in today's passage of scripture. Just before the events of our reading, Jesus' disciples had reached a turning point. Prompted by Jesus, the disciples, led by Peter as spokesman, finally recognized their friend and leader, Jesus, to be none other than God's Messiah. They've discovered that he is God's chosen one, awaited through the ages, son of the living God, as Peter puts it. Now, for the disciples, the good has just got even better. Jesus is already a superstar, drawing crowds wherever he goes. And people don't go away disappointed either. They have their lives changed by his healing, by his teaching about God's kingdom of grace and peace. And there they are, right at the heart of the action. Surely it can only go from strength to strength. And now they find that they are disciples of the Messiah, the Christ himself. So <clears throat> it can only be a matter of time before he takes over as the just and gentle ruler people are longing for. And they'll be right there by his side. And this is the moment which Jesus chooses to throw a massive bucket of cold water on all those plans and hopes. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. And Mark adds, he made this very clear to them. <clears throat> now Peter is still glowing with pride as Jesus has just commended him for being the one to recognize him as Messiah. Maybe that is why he feels bold enough to speak out now and to insist to Jesus that this must never happen. The reaction he gets could not be more different than a few minutes earlier. Jesus turned around, looked at his disciples and rebuked Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. 
Your thoughts don't come from God, but from human nature. Poor Peter, we say. He meant well. Why such a fierce reaction? A few weeks ago, I spoke about developing eyes of faith, learning to see God at work, to see his blessings, even in small things. We need to learn to put on God's spectacles, to see things as he sees them. And if we do, then things may look very different. And that's what Jesus is saying to Peter here. Your thoughts don't come from God, but from human nature. I mean, you can see where Peter is going, motivated by a desire to protect his friend. Why allow this to happen? Jesus has used his power to save others from death, from despair, from disease and disability. Why not use a bit of it to look after himself? But can't you just hear the echoes of the devil's temptations we looked at last week? No wonder, Jesus says to Peter, get away from me, Satan. The son of man must suffer and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, says Jesus. If he let him, Peter would no doubt go on to suggest that Jesus toned down his teaching. Maybe stop criticizing the authorities so much, come to an understanding with them. But Jesus knows that that's not the way. Those authorities are misrepresenting God and his grace and Jesus must oppose, not appease them. Are we sometimes tempted to compromise with things we know are wrong? rather than stand out for God's way? To that, Jesus says, if you are ashamed of me and of my teaching in this godless and wicked day, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. But it's not just about not compromising. There's an important word which Jesus uses. He says, the son of man must suffer much and be rejected. Now Mark puts this word must in Jesus' mouth a number of times. In the end, Jesus will die, not because the religious authorities wish it to happen, but because it is God's will. In fact, Jesus might have said, you know that glorious vision you lot all have, that one of me becoming king, bringing in a kingdom of justice and joy. Well, this is how that happens. This is how God will extend that salvation to all people for all time through my death and resurrection. St. Paul would later write about God's foolishness, the foolishness of the cross. But, he wrote, God's foolishness is far wiser than man's wisdom. Your thoughts, Peter, don't come from God, but from human nature. Well, we understand that now, but I doubt his words made much sense to the disciples they were still reeling from the shock of them. All they could do at this moment, as sometimes we have to do, was just accept that God knows what he is doing, even when everything seems to be going wrong. But still, why did they stay with him, with him despite their misgivings? Well, of course, there were those beyond the 12 who followed Jesus for a while, but fell away when the going got tough or when they became disillusioned. On one occasion, Jesus said to the 12, will you also leave me? And their reply was, Master, to whom else shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I'm sure that this is exactly the reason that our persecuted brothers and sisters would give if you asked them, why do you continue in your Christian faith 
when it costs you so much? Have a look at that open doors watch list. It's more than just facts and figures. For each country, they also give at least one human story as an example. And in each one, for all the suffering they encounter, the joy, hope and peace they find in Jesus ring through. In fact, they are discovering the wonderful truth of Jesus' words here. If you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for me and for the gospel, you will save it. And of course, we can't look at this as only applying to Jesus followers in faraway places or in ancient times. That wonderful truth, that glorious promise applies to us too. But so do those difficult and challenging words, that recruitment slogan. Jesus said, if any of you want to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross and follow me. Amen. Well, we're now going to have a song which uh, was recorded by some of us this week and was new to many of us, but thank you so much to Sheila Garten for introducing it to us. It may be new to you as well. I would say it acts very much as a reflection and a glorious and hopeful reflection on those words of Jesus. It's called, Keep the Banner Flying.
And now we're going to say the Apostles' Creed together. Let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, accompanied by some lovely photos from uh, around his home, we're going to be led in our prayers by Paul Bowden. Dear Father, give us patience as we follow the road on which you set each of us. Let us be confident, not in our own understanding, but in your guiding hand. Your knowledge of each of us exceeds what any of us can grasp or see. At this moment of new hopes mixed with continuing fear for our aspirations, for our security, for our health, we look to your goodness and mercy. Be with us on the way as winter becomes spring. As we entrust our lives to you, give us the grace to seek in turn your kingdom in our hearts, and in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to keep in our prayers to you, everyone affected by the coronavirus, through illness, isolation, or financial hardship. We ask that in you they will find recovery and relief. We pray for everyone providing medical and personal care and for those involved in medical research, that through their skills and sacrifice, greater loss may be spared, that many will be restored to health, and that all who are ill will find comfort. At this moment, we pray especially for our children, for teachers and those working in education, as they prepare for the reopening of schools. We ask you to keep them safe, for their communities to be restored and their hearts lifted by their coming together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our own community of St. Christopher's. We thank you for the great gift of this church and how all of us have been touched by your grace. We pray for the ministries of those who lead us, for David and Kim, for members of our pastoral and children's ministry teams, and for the members of our church council and our wardens, David and Andy. We pray too for our missionary partners, Johnny and Anne McLean in Thailand, and Megumi and Helen Fazakali in Mamali. May they all keep close to you, Father, and be alert to your will and follow where you guide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, loving and wise, knowing all our hopes and fears, we've come to you together this morning, knowing that we can place all our cares in your hands. Give us quietness of mind and firm trust in your will for us and for our lives, rather than in what we might want our lives to be ourselves. Keep us all in your love and in perfect peace. Father, we ask all these things for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as Jesus taught us, 
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And amen to those lovely prayers which we were led in by Paul as well. Well, we call this Spot Church News and I've certainly got some news for you this week, which is that uh, we have taken the decision as a church that we don't need to and shouldn't suspend live services here in church any longer. So from next week, we will have our 8.30 service. That's a short simple service of morning prayer and then effectively this service at 10 45 our morning worship uh, it will be live streamed and i know many of you will uh, still be joining us in that way and that's absolutely fine in fact we'd be stuck if you all tried to come um but i know that some folk will find it a real blessing to be able to worship together here in church so we'll still sadly be uh, hampered in some ways by the restrictions that we have to take. Um, you need to book so that we know you're coming. Now, uh, get in touch with Duncan Matheson. We'll make sure his contact details are clearly displayed on the website, but they're also on the back of uh, Hot Pot, and uh, you can find them in other ways too, or just check Ask Me. Um, it'll still involve wearing masks for those of us uh, here in church. We'll have to have a lot of ventilation uh, that's recognised now to be very important. So that means it'll be chilly. Uh, it would be if they had all the doors open today. And so do bring your warm coat. Uh, and, and so it goes on. We'll have to be quite careful how we organise uh, you when you're here. But that's so that we can open safely because we do believe that's something that's very important to do. Oh, and by the way, um, we... One of the uh, issues that we have is that uh, we, we need to not really have folk in the church for too long before the service starts. So if you could aim to turn up much not much earlier than five minutes before the service that you choose to come to. But I do look forward to seeing some of you here next week and others of you joining us as you are today. And by the way, <clears throat> in a fortnight's time, it's Mothering Sunday and we will be marking that, of course, in our service and we'll call it our family service for March too. Some of you have been very much enjoying the uh, series by John Riley on Jesus' letters to the seven churches of Revelation. And uh, in the coming week, episode six will be released, and that is the letter to Philadelphia. So uh, look out for that, and uh, you can look at the other ones on the website too, numbers one to five. Uh, there'll be a Zoom, an opportunity to Zoom together after this service for coffee or whatever. Uh, but also using Zoom are our junior church earlier this morning at 9.30 and our youth church this evening at 6. And uh, that happens, that's still going on and it's still happening in the weeks to come or rather on a fortnightly basis. Um, thank you so much to our wonderful uh, editor and team of Hot Pot, uh, the March one. I just received this uh, when I came, it was left for me in church this morning. Uh, your uh, copy will be available. And I do hope that uh, you, if you haven't got a copy coming, you'll make sure that, uh, that, that you get in touch and that you get your hot pot. And um, you can of course read it also on our website, uh, but it's always a wonderful read and I'm looking forward to reading the March hot pot myself. Um, I occasionally mention this, I thought I would just remind you this morning that if you do wish to make an offering towards the ongoing presence and work and ministry of this church, uh, you can do so, um, of course, as part of our regular giving, as many of you do, uh, using standing order and so on. Or uh, as a one-off gift, you can go to our website and Andy has just uh, put a circle there. You can see around the uh, bit that you click on to make a gift and it takes you through to a page that looks like that. Uh, and uh, there's some suggested amounts. Thank you. 
Now we come to our final hymn, and I think this might be a first. We're going to uh, have one that we didn't record in the coming week, but we recorded some months ago for one of these services. But funnily enough, it was Mary once again on the organ. It's that wonderful hymn about following Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Can I thank you very warmly for joining me and joining one another in our worship today. And I do wish you God's richest blessing in the week to come and look forward to seeing you as soon as possible, I hope. So our final blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him and the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be amongst you and remain with you always amen go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen